Hello everybody and welcome to the AP Human Geography Module 7 lesson on urban geography. So what we want to focus on today are is learning why people live in big cities. And so we've got some key concepts and we're going to use some images to go along with that. Um, first of all, we're going to start with site and situation. Why is New York City, for example, why did it become so important? Well, remember the Dutch settled there. Uh, of course, there were Native Americans living there already, but the Dutch settled there because it was easy to get to from Holland. And, um, and it had a river, it had access to the inland, and so they came in ships and began settling it. For commercial purposes was why New York was settled. So both their site uh, on the river and their situation near the in, uh, with access to the inland was really important. Um, to talk about the geography of cities, we need to think about the idea of land rent. Land rent is the idea that um, some places cost more than others and be, it's because they're more desirable. So the area in the center of Manhattan is really expensive real estate because it's really desirable, because it's the center of, 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 uh, of so much in terms of commerce and trade in the world. Um, we are going to talk about range and threshold in this chapter. So range and threshold, the idea that uh, a, a business locates where the most customers are and where the most customers are willing to travel to. And so New York City is exactly that. It's a gl it, it has global range and threshold. People want to come there from all over the world. Think about the idea of vertical geography. We think about land. You buy a piece of land in New York City or in any American city. You don't just buy the land, you buy the sky rights above it. So when you um, buy that piece of land, you're, built, you're buying also the air above it and the ability to build up into that air. Because the land is so expensive, in order to make it profitable, you have to add more, more stories to it. And that's the idea of vertical geography. The closer you are to the center of the urban core, the taller the buildings are. As we look at this, um, the idea of, of cities, keep in mind that people have to live there. And so um, that brings in many things. You know, the idea of urban geography, why are willing pe people willing to live, you know, in a small apartment up high? It's because it's so near to all the things they want, including art and culture. In big cities, you have really interesting architecture generally because um, people want their buildings to stand out from other buildings. So they spend extra money to make them more interesting. Examples like the Empire State Building or Rockefeller Center in New York or the Guggenheim Museum, which is a fantastically designed building that is circular in nature. And when you walk by it, you go, wow, that must be something really interesting inside of that building. Then there's the idea of public space. Play place for people to hang out because their apartments are small and arts might happen there and music might happen there but also just a place for people to sit and read. Back to that idea of ver vertical geography and transportation. There's no place to park your car. When you live in a skyscraper you probably don't have a car. If you do have a car the idea of a, a parking lot in New York City would be so expensive that they actually have to stack the cars on top of each other to make this work. In Japan and Tokyo, they actually have um, skyscrapers that uh, the car goes into almost a merry-go-round and goes up inside the building. Um, in New York, it's more likely to be either a parking garage that's underground or something like this where they actually stack the cars on top of each other. Mass transit is really important. So where do you where are you going to put the, the trains? You notice you have subways, so you have train tracks that are exposed the farther out you get from Manhattan. But in the city itself, the subways are down underground because that is land that the city could take to build those things that was less expensive. Even though it's really expensive to build underground, it, it makes sense for them because by creating this underground network, people can get from place to place without having to build giant structures on top of the surface. And the last thing I want to talk to you is about this idea of gentrification. In cities that are successful, the urban core becomes so expensive that places that maybe used to be slums or places where um, the poor could live, it these are being gentrified, which means they're being transformed into fancy apartments, which means the poor people who used to live or the middle class people who used to live in the cities have to move farther out, which is why the largest growing group in American suburbs uh, are, the, are the formerly urban poor and they're kind of displaced and having to move out into the suburbs because that's the only place they can afford it. 
All right, well, that's a very quick introduction to urban geography. I hope I've hit the key concepts and left you wanting to learn more as we go through this chapter. Have a great day.